Ta-da. I don't know why I keep having to say that as if I'm making my own sound effects. <laughs> And welcome to my channel. My name is Clarissa and I'm an aspiring clothes maker from Glasgow, Scotland. This is where I show you all the crafty projects I've been working on. I'm very excited to start off with what I'm wearing. This is the Salty Days sweater by Tutawakika. Woohoo! Well, it's not by me, but the pattern is written by Kika. <laughs> Yay, it's finally finished. So the last in the last podcast, I showed you how the sleeves were really much too long for me and how it, how much it grew after blocking. So I ripped it back and now it's a lot shorter. It's still a little bit long, I think. Um, just because this this section here, it works better when it's not kind of judged up. It has to be stretched out. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like that it's, it goes past my wrist because then I'm able to keep my hands warm. because My hands are always, always cold. Also in the last podcast, I said that I might shorten the length as well, but it turns out I didn't have to. Ta -da! Um, I suppose I could shorten it, but I quite like how, how ginormous it is. It's all right looking in jeans so i could wear the way <laughs> belt. the way uh, the designer kika styled this jumper as she did a little french tuck in the front and i thought you know what that looks that looks fine i think of course in front of the camera i feel like i'm so clumsy doing this but like in normal life I'm able to do this properly. <laughs> uh, whatever. Whatever. It looks fine. And I like it. And I'm going to wear it all the time now. Mm, I take that back. It's super cute. It's really nice. And I would love to wear it all the time. The, my only issue is that it's mohair. Okay, so the yarn that I use is Double Sunday by Sinus Garn and the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. Hair. And because it's mohair and it just gets everywhere and it gets on my food, my toddler's food, and I don't know. And also, I while it, I'm only wearing a camisole inside, so I'm not too uncomfortable. It is a little bit scratchy still. I must just be so sensitive to, to mohair, I think. It could be my really dry skin. So I have dry skin in general, but since moving to a colder climate, it's just gotten worse and I've been a lot more itchy and I've been having to use um, a lot more lotion a lot more often. <laughs> yeah, with the mohair, it's just a little bit scratchy, especially here. So I'm thinking this might be the end of my relationship with mohair, which is a shame because it's used often in a lot of the yarn and a lot of the patterns that i like and that means now i'm gonna have to look for an alternative i'm just i'm just being lazy but i'm sure there are other alternatives that would be really nice the other thing about mohair is it's it looks so nice in pictures like you have the halo effect that that people really like and i really like but then in real life like when i'm actually looking at the at the jumper the mohair is so fluffy like it's up to it's up to here so it's I don't know if I really like that is that fair does it have to be fair I mean it's my personal preference obviously so I'm not I'm not sold on it so maybe this is the end of my relationship with mohair <laughs> another thing to say about this this jumper is that it took forever to dry so it's autumn now in scotland and we've been having the heating heating on at the in at the end of the day and then first thing in the morning so this room that i'm in where it was drying i would have thought you know kind of things would dry a bit quicker because the heating was on but 
that was not true. It took maybe like three or four days, probably more than about four or five days for this to completely dry. Is that normal? Like, is this a cold country type of issue? I think it's because it's not hung. So our, our clothes, like the normal clothes that we wear, we, you just hang it on a on a clothesline and it and it dries maybe after a day with if there's no sun or if it's not out in the sun but with this because you have to it's knitwear so you have to lay it flat it just took forever to dry does anyone have any solutions oh i learned something new as well so i um, in our local library, we, there are these book bug classes where they do sing songs and read a book with lots of different kids. And it's, and it's free and it's, it's a really good service, I think, for, by the, from the local council. Anyway, it, I was in our local library and I saw this, this lady knitting something. So I was like, oh, knitting friend. Hello. I walked up to her and we had a, a long chat about knitting. And so I see her now every, every Monday for book bug, before book bug classes. And um, something that she shared with me about folded collars was that what she would do is that she would decrease up to here. I don't know. I guess so that the so that the collar would lay flat. So we were talking about Jack's Moby sweater mini, I think, because the pattern suggests that you need to use a you need to sew in a not garter like an elastic band in the in the folded neckline. So that it will lay flat and she says what she would normally do is to just decrease up to here and then increase again at the top i am not very good at that kind of thing i've never tried it before so i don't really know how that might work like how much do you decrease and how much i guess to increase you just need to go back to the normal stitch count but like where would you decrease and how so i will ask her one of these days I think but I thought that was a really good tip to share with you I think that's all I have to say about this I'm so happy that it's finished and that it's beautiful maybe I just need to buy shirts like t-shirts I could just borrow my husband's t-shirts but I wonder if it's gonna like in the first sweater if you could if you'd be able to see the shirt inside anyway moving swiftly on to my works in progress the first one I'd like to show you is my progress on the Primrose Slipover by Along Avec Anna. Ta-da! I don't know why I keep having to say that as if I'm making my own sound effects. <laughs> this is this is the slipover. Right. The let's just start with the basics. The yarn that I'm using is the Woolly Knit British yarn four ply so it's fingering weight and, and, I, and i'm holding it double i'm using four millimeter needles and i'm knitting size 90 i think yeah size 90 if you want to hear all about like how i got to got to that size you can watch the previous episode the yarn it's i really really like this color so it's 100 percent british wool so it's a little rustic or it is quite rustic I really, really like the color. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit closer here. It's super nice. Like it's a light, it's the colorway is called oatmeal, but there are strands that are black, strands that are white, and it's mostly like a, a medium gray, grayish, gray brown type of color. It's so, so lovely. I don't think it suits me <laughs> because. I think my I'm or maybe I'm just not used to because I'm I feel like I'm a tropical island bright colored type or light colored type of person and this is really quite muted but I think it's really like my eyes and my brain enjoy it so we'll see if I'm gonna be able to wear it so you knit the back first and I made a big a big mistake by binding off <laughs> A little too early so the instructions were like knit until x centimeters for size 90 and of course size 90 is you know small i didn't check my row gauge 
I didn't even think about that. And I didn't think about, but I knit to the, to the recommended length and it was just much too short. And, but that's not to say I didn't even try it on. <laughs> I tried it on, <laughs> but I tried it on sitting down. Like, well, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I, I wasn't thinking clearly. So I was trying it on sitting down. I was like, oh, it looks like, it looks, feels like the right length. Let me get to knitting the ribbing, the end, and then binding off. And it was all wrong. It was all wrong because it ended up really much too short. So when I stood up and tried it on and tried the back like on my front, I was like, what is going on? It ended up like right on my, on the smallest bit of my waist. And it was like, that's where the ties are supposed to go. So no, I need to knit it longer. So, but then I just decided to, to start knitting the front anyway. <laughs> and this is the front. And I've gotten to, I'm, I've stood, I tried it on and stood up and I've got to the end. I'm now knitting the ribbing section. Yeah, and you knit it flat. I was a little bit worried that maybe I would have a problem of, what's it called that rowing out where the knits and pearls pearl rows might might be obvious but then i don't see it do you maybe adding editing clarissa will see it but i'm not sure but then i do notice it in my ribbing so this is the back ribbing and look at how uneven the rib stitches are like when i was looking at it from afar I was thinking did I twist the rib like did I but I'm pretty sure I didn't because if you look at the stitches like it it looks straight I'm stretching it out and it looks straight so it's clearly my knit and pearl rows so I don't know if I should try a different kind of pearl stitch to make it to make it nicer looking I don't mind it though I'll just accept it and it's I don't mind it but it would be nice to improve my technique <laughs> oh the other thing i was a little concerned about is the bind off the instructions just tell you to bind off and i decided to use the the italian bind off because i really like that i really like how that looks on one by one rib and then i don't know if you noticed but in the the edge of the the stitches there's a selvage i don't know if it's double knit or if it's i cord but this is how it looks on the side and then in the back you'll see it there as well and i really don't know the difference fair enough so it's one or the other i think and then i wasn't sure how to bind it off in the end here let's see i don't know but it's just the last few stitches so it's it doesn't really matter to me I, I don't really mind it and um but then i'm at the end of the pattern apparently i only noticed like after after i had bound off that there are there were instructions on how to bind off this bit or i think there's like a video a, a link to a video of how to do it and i'm gonna i'm gonna check it when when that i when i get to that bit at the end of the front i'm gonna have to redo the back anyway to lengthen the to lengthen it so i'm going to have to redo the, the bind off and everything and another tip another thing that i did for this bind off so if you remember from last podcast i was worried that the tubular bind off of the moby sweater mini made the the end of the sleeves and the end of the body a little bit tight i thought and i think it was the way that i had bound off i'm so the way I had done this was to bind this off to make it really nice and stretchy was to stretch as I bound off. So I would put the needle through and then stretch it a bit and then put the needle through again. That way it, yeah, that way I'm sure that there's enough a yarn in between each stitch to allow it to, to stretch. It didn't, it doesn't, okay. Let me check <laughs> to see if it. If it, if it looks bad but it doesn't look like it flared anything so i think that was pretty good and then so my plan is after i finish the front i'll lengthen the back i'll block it first before working on the ties 
just to make sure that the placement of the ties are in the right place. So apparently you're supposed to put it where your waist is, the smallest part of your waist. That's where I intend to knit it. So I decided to try it on to show you what it looks like. I needed to change jumpers because my, I don't think it would have worked very well with the salty base sweater. So you'll have to ignore, ignore how short the back is. But this is how it looks from the front. Yeah, so I'm hoping that the ribbing would end. Maybe I'll lengthen even the ribbing. And then the ties should be about here. So the edges are, I'm a little bit worried because of the way the edges are knit. It rolls inward, so it looks like this is a lot thinner than it really is. But I'm hoping that if I block it, it won't be so awkward. And I'm hoping that it'll grow as well a little bit more. Yeah, I should have knitted a little longer. I kind of don't want it to be too long. Look how tiny the back is. Right where my waist is. I don't know what I was thinking. I hope. I hope you can hear me and you heard everything I said. I did say the last time that this would be a better podcast. I quite like to be able to wear this flip over on top of a jumper or a sweatshirt i don't know to to class me up a little bit <laughs> but to make me look a little bit more put together i think and warmer just here i forgot another thing that my new knitting friend shared with me is that this style of slip over is called a tabard apparently from the the time when knights would wear chain mail i mean i can see the shape of of this as chain mail and in the 70s this style of slip over was really popular and isn't that really cool how styles just go round and round and nothing is ever completely new and the way they would um put this i guess put the front and back together was to put i think it was just snap buttons i'm i might be misquoting her here but it was definitely not ties and i think the the little ribbons were are super cute, so I'm hoping that will turn out really nicely. The next work in progress I want to show you is the Mountain Walk Socks, which is a pattern by Handmade by Florence or Florence Miller. And I need to put my hand in so that you can see the actual pattern. Isn't that so pretty? They're made of faux cables, so the way the cables are made is like the crisscross pattern in the Moby mini sweater that I made as well. So it's the same technique. So no need for any cable needles. It's just it's a little a little cable. It's not so cute <laughs> without having a foot in it, but it's super nice. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Cascade Heritage in the colorway thistle. I'm knitting the, the smaller size. It's just two sizes, a smaller one and a bigger one. And I'm knitting the first one. And this is 2.25 millimeter needles. These are the ever popular Chaogu, whatever, the one with the red cable. <laughs> and I'm using Magic Loop, which is really the nicest. I think it works really well with socks with this construction, the heel slip stitch heel flap and gusset i think um because it just makes it just makes sense how one the what is this called the instep the front bit is in one needle and this second needle is where the increases and decreases happen yeah i'm really enjoying knitting this the leg i knit this a little bit shorter than as the pattern suggested well the pattern just says knit the leg for as long as you like <laughs> I guess this is what the pattern suggested, but I think she, the sample photo is the sock that, that the designer knit had the longer leg. I decided to do it a bit shorter because if you watched the podcast episode where I talked about the, the first pair of socks ever that I made, the vanilla socks using the crazy sock ladies pattern, I mentioned there that 
my legs are a little funny that my ankles are a lot smaller than and then my leg kind of shapes out that way so the top I don't know it, the socks just don't fit that well and a lot of people suggested in the comments that I say a lot of people maybe one or two people because I don't have that many people commenting on my videos just yet so one of the commenters said you I could decrease in the angle and then increase to the leg which is an, a brilliant idea but I don't know how to do it. It's the same as this collar. Like, I don't know how to even start going about it. I'm like, I'm sure I can measure my leg and measure my ankle and then do a gauge swatch, figure out how much I need to increase and how much to decrease. And it's a bit of a faff and I'm not ready to do that. I could learn. Like, I think um, Nitty Natty of the Love and Stitches podcast, Natalie is her real name. She has a sock course, um, perfect fit socks course. And I think she takes you through all of those calculations. And if you're interested in that, please go ahead and do that. I will probably do it, get into it um, next year <laughs> because I just don't have the time and I don't have the patience and at the moment to get into that. Maybe when Jack's a bit older and I feel like I have a bit more Kind of space to think about myself and the things that I want to do or not we'll see I have a friend okay this is a really long tangent I have a friend who has kids two kids who are about who are school ages maybe 10 and 8 or something and she was saying that she can't deal with knitting anything complicated and she's been knitting she since she was a teenager like she's done really really incredible things and she says like at the moment, she's just the decision fatigued. She's like, mom brain isn't real. It's not a real thing. Okay, this is a really long tangent. But my point is, I don't know when I'm going to be able to think about perfectly fit, fitted socks and <laughs> to bring myself back to how I even got there. I just, I knit the leg a little bit shorter just so it's like right before my leg just proper goes that way <laughs> it's really nicely see if I were very cool and I wore boots a lot then I would probably knit this a little bit longer so that this little rolled edge which is super cute would like peek out of the boot and I could be wearing tights and it would be so nice but I'm not that cool I normally just wear trainers I've ripped back so many times just trying to do the heel flap and gusset I don't know what was going on with my brain. I frogged the heel flap and gusset three times because like at some point, okay, so when you do a heel flap and gusset, you're supposed to pick up stitches at one point, right? To be able to knit this, this gusset. And I can't remember if it was this side or this side, but it had big holes and I couldn't understand why. In the end, I was, I decided I'm just going to leave it. It's not going to be seen like, even I'm not going to see it when I'm wearing it. And then when I reached like maybe about halfway through this, this gusset, um, my stitch count was all wrong. And so I was like, it must be a sign. So I knit back and apparently I think it, I think it's fixed. I think it looks, it's not terrible now. I think it's the way that I had done one of the slip stitches. Maybe it was too loose or I didn't slip or I slipped. I really don't know I really don't know but it looks it looks fine now both both sides look I'm so rambly this next clip is a bit of a surprise because I didn't really think of doing this this month it was not on the cards it was not in my plans but I did it anyway so Jack's hat from last year doesn't fit him anymore or it's just too tight now so I thought, oh, I can knit him a hat. And there, I had so much leftover yarn from the Moby Mini sweater. I think I had like a, a skein, like a ball of yarn and a, a ball and a half of yarn left over. I was going to keep it so that I could lengthen the, the jumper later on. <sighs> I'm full of tangents today. But then I, on a whim, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to knit him a hat. And then at that point, I had already purchased the Muscle Bra hat pattern by Isolde Teague 
and I just cast it on on his side. And this is how far I've gotten. I'm so proud of myself. I think it was because on Tuesday, I had a meeting that lasted from like 10 or 9.30 in the morning until like 1 or something. We had lots of breaks in between, so that was fine. But this was the perfect companion to that meeting. So it was just literally knitting stocking it in the round no not much thinking this is such a good pattern because it fits children's size until adult size and and just and it can fit any gauge it's just this is why it's such a popular pattern and why so many people have already knitted so the way that i cast on was not i didn't use what was written in the pattern i used a tutorial from nitty natty so if you search nitty natty muscle bra hat cast on this is what i did this is what my cast on looks like i used the crochet hook size 4.5 millimeters to do this i think it's like a magic ring magic circle but it's not it's not a double one i don't know just watch the video that's what she she explained it and i don't really understand it that well because i'm still learning to crochet properly i think and i used 4.5 millimeter crochet hook to match the 4.5 millimeter needles but I think I should have used a smaller hook I don't know I must crochet I thought I was a tight crocheter just because I'm still learning and I'm a tight knitter in general so I figured it was the same thing but it's not because now I've got these big big holes over there I don't know I could cover it with a pom-pom or or not I don't think Jack will mind I mean it will be covered with a second bit of the muscle bra hat okay so if you're not familiar with a muscle bra hat it's basically like a long tube up to the end and then you decrease and then you're supposed to kind of fold it inwards fold the inwards into the hat this way so that it's kind of a double where are my words today so it's supposed to end up being double folded and then you kind of fold it outwards as well to create like a brim i hope that was clear but if it's not, just Google Muscle Bear Hat. You'll find all the projects and all the people who made them. It's really customizable. It's a beautiful pattern. It's well written, super simple, and I can completely understand the, the hype. I decided to use 4.5 millimeter needles because for this yarn and the Moby sweater mini, I used the 5 millimeter needle. The fabric was a bit loose, so I decided to size half down. I feel like I should have sized it down further because I I'm not sure about the fabric because I feel like it might be nicer with a tighter fabric please excuse the dodgy knitting I'm hoping that blocking will do its magic and it won't be so uneven and excuse any dog hair that you spot as well that's just like the life of living in a in a house with a dog that's everything um so this is my this is basically my meeting knitting project it's really good for that and jack does need a hat especially this winter so i should probably finish this in december and i think i will because i'm more probably more than halfway through acquisitions that's right some yarn arrived the other day and i'm so excited to share this with you i hope it's not so loud let me put this down I purchased a sweater quantity of Samnisgarn Alpaca Wool. This is in color 1099, so it's basically like a black, in other words. I am test knitting the Pillars Pullover, which is super exciting. It's not started yet, but I'm happy that the yarns arrived and I'm going to be watching this for that. Well, at least decided to join us, that's why the door is open and you can hear his tail tip-tapping away. This is the Saniskarn Alpaca Wool. Alpaca Wool. This is 65% alpaca and 35% wool. I was looking for a wool blend because I was wanting something soft. This pullover wasn't the kind of outdoor jacket type of thing where you would wear it over other clothes. And this, this seemed like a pullover that you put on, um, on top of a shirt or a camisole. So I was wanting to make sure that the yarn was really soft because I mean, this is knitting for olive soft silk mohair that everybody says, there's no itch, there's no itch. It's not bad, but there I can feel, I'm really, apparently I am really sensitive to this 
to these things yeah it's probably just my dry skin so maybe my skin and my sensitivities will adjust as as life goes on but in the meantime i needed something really soft and this is what i chose i wanted the black one i wanted the black the uh black pullover just because i thought that would be really 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 useful yeah really exciting this yarn is super soft and squishy and i'm really excited i think this is one of those things that are not scratchy i mean i don't know how true this kind of test is of like putting the yarn to your face or to your neck because how do you know because like i don't know how effective that is i suppose so when i net this up we will find out if it's if i'm needing to wear something more than a camisole underneath because it's i think the right the pattern is v-neck and therefore, it probably won't look nice at all if I wore a t-shirt underneath. Maybe a v-neck shirt? I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, this will work out. I'm hopeful. Anyway, it's a blend. So it should be less scratchy than if it were 100% wool, like my primrose look over. Thank you so much for spending your very valuable time watching this video right to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!